hear Coco snoring? Ah, oh, so cute. Hi, welcome to episode three of the Sweet Sparrow Knits podcast. This is a podcast about knitting, sewing, spinning, and general cozy crafting. Um, my name is Julie. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Julie Rose Sews, and I'm also on Periscope as Julie Rose Sews. And you can find my Etsy shop where I sell my hand dyed yarns at sweetsparrowyarns.etsy.com. So. Um, I want to start out with a little disclaimer that uh, my neighbors who are behind that wall um, are currently playing their TV pretty loud, so I'm sorry if you're able to hear that. Hopefully it won't pick up too much on the camera. I did a couple tests and you couldn't really hear it, but, um, you know, annoying. Um, so hopefully that's not too bad. Um, I am coming to you from New Jersey. I live just outside New York City and I work in New York City. Uh, I am a fashion designer in my everyday life. <laughs> um, so I guess let's get started. Um, it's cold and rainy today. So I'm enjoying having a chance to bundle up in my knitwear and enjoy some nice hot tea. Unlike last week where <laughs> I was extremely warm <laughs> while I was recording. Um, so this week I'm enjoying some hot tea. This is one of my favorite, yeah, one of my favorite mugs from Anthropology. Oh, I got lip gloss on it. Um, cute, right? I really like it. I got it when I was in college. Um, when I was in school, I would plan my class schedule around the anthropology markdown schedule, which they would have new stuff go on sale. I want to say it was every Tuesday morning. It's probably changed since then. That was a couple years ago. But um, yeah, I would plan my schedule so that I would have Tuesday mornings free and I could run to the anthropology at Chelsea Market and get my fill of cute mugs and candles and dresses. Um, but anyway, <laughs> um, I meant to talk about what's in the mug. So today I'm enjoying coconut black tea from McNulty's. There. Uh, McNulty's is my favorite place in the city to get tea. Um, they have a really awesome assortment and they have decaf, they have herbal, um, but I personally really love flavored black teas, so that's kind of what I focus on. Um, it's a really great ambiance. When you go in, it has just rows and rows of apothecary jars of loose tea, um, and then they weigh it out for you on these giant antique scales. It's a really cool experience. I highly recommend it when you're in the city um, if you like tea. So this week I picked up my glasses. Um, I went for an optometrist appointment a couple weeks ago because I was having a hard time um, seeing distance, especially after work. Um, I was having a hard time seeing whether signs on trains said five minutes or eight minutes or three minutes. Like I could tell it was like a rounded kind of number, but I couldn't tell what the number was. So I picked up my glasses this week. Um, so I'll show you how they look on. Nope. I really like them. <laughs> um, these are for distance only, so I'm not going to keep them on through the rest of the podcast, but I wanted to show you guys how they look. Um, and you guys left me so many sweet comments on Instagram. Um, I posted a photo of myself wearing them and I got just so many nice comments and that was so sweet. And I really appreciated them because, um, you know, I think any time that you make a change to your appearance, even if it's something as minor as wearing glasses, you know, a small percentage of the time, 
Um, I think it's really reassuring to have people tell you that you look good, <laughs> um, which sounds silly, but it is, it is important. And I think a lot of us base a lot of our feelings about ourselves on the feedback that we get from social media, which, you know, yeah, that's, that's a discussion for another day. But, um, I really appreciate all of the kind words that you guys sent my way. What is this? I've got one hair going just off on its own direction here. There. All right, so I'm going to take these off and we'll hop into the knitting. All right, let's get started with works in progress. So last week I was knitting on a sock for my boyfriend. Well, the first of two, not just knitting in one sock. Um, out of my house friend base in the Dickin colorway. And this week the first sock is done. It needs an afterthought heel. So I am planning on doing all of my afterthought heels um, over the course of the coming week. I really wanna get them done so that I can, um, you know, so that I can wear the socks that I've knit for myself, so that I can finish Rob's socks and get them to him. Um, and I, so here's the second half of the yarn that I will be knitting socks for Rob with. So I haven't cast those on yet, but I'm going to hopefully do that this afternoon. I like to get the toe done in my apartment um, just because I do like to look at the pattern for that just so that I get a nice rounded toe shape. Um, and I don't like to do that on the train. I really prefer to do that at home. I'm gonna have to take this off. It's a little warmer than I anticipated. Um, actually, I can show you guys this too. Um, this is my campsite shawl. It's a really giant shawl. <laughs> uh, the pattern is by Alicia Plummer. Um, this was really popular, I wanna say last summer, and I knit one in Louisa Harding Oriel, which is one of my very favorite yarns. It's a DK weight. Um, I think it's a two ply. It's just very uh, springy and it has a beautiful sparkle in it. So this is like one of my coziest shawls. This is what I wear when it's really chilly out and I need something that I can just bunch up under my coat and um, keep any wind at all from getting through to my neck. Um, so I think I'm going to take that off for the moment. Okay. Can I get my bun in the camera? Mm. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I discovered um, a new work in progress that I had forgotten about <laughs> since last week. Um, this is the color dipped scarf. The pattern is by Pearl Soho. Um, it's a two color brioche scarf. It only has two colors on the ends of the scarf and then it switches to one color for the middle. Um, I started this right at the end of the winter and I guess I just lost steam on it because I wasn't going to need a scarf anytime soon. Um, so the pink is O Wool Bulky in the Desert Blush colorway. Desert Rose? No, I think it's Desert Blush. Um, it's their non superwash and I really enjoy working with it. It's got a very, um, it's very woolly wool, <laughs> so to speak. Um, so I'm moving right along on this. And I'm actually down into the second section of two color brioche. So I'm going to finish that and then I think I want to put tassels on it. Um, I saved a good amount of each color so that I would be able to put some alternating color tassels on the end. Um, I just like tassels better than regular fringe for some reason. Here's a closer view of the pink. Ooh, it's so squishy. I love it. Um, I purchased this at Rhinebeck last year um, at the Oval booth. Uh, which is one of my very favorite booths at Rhinebeck. I think I probably spend 60% of the money that I bring for Rhinebeck in that one booth. Their colors really speak to me. They're very muted. Um, 
so I feel confident that no matter what colors I buy they'll go with basically everything in my wardrobe because I do have a pretty muted wardrobe I don't wear a lot of very bright colors um, so there's this one and the gray tie this up here the gray is Cascade Superwash 128 I don't know the exact name of this gray Heatherway colorway it's just Heatherway this gray heather colorway, it's just um, kind of their medium gray heather. Uh, and that I got from my beautiful friend Christina. Um, she was knitting the most gorgeous fisherman's rib scarf out of it and it was so squishy and soft and she said, hey, I have a bunch extra, would you like it? And I said, oh my god, yes, I would love it. And because she's a ridiculously sweet and wonderful person, she would not allow me to pay her for it. Um, so Christina, I'm still going to find a way to pay you back for that. Um, but thank you very, very much. I absolutely love this yarn. Um, so I would like to finish this scarf, um, very soon, uh, which shouldn't be a problem. I don't have a lot left to go. And my last work in progress is my calligraphy cardigan. And this guy is moving along. I'm just gonna show it to you upside down um, so I don't have to try to rearrange everything here. Um, so there's the neckline ribbing down at the bottom. It's a folded collar. There's the armholes. And I am working on the increases for the side seam. Um, I did some decreases. Uh, to the waist and I'm increasing back out over the hips. So the yarn I'm using for this is Knit Pick City Tweed DK in the plush colorway. It's a really beautiful lavender tweed and it's a wonderful yarn to work with. I'm really enjoying it. Um, I think if I finish this, well, when I finish this cardigan, that's not the if. <laughs> um, if this cardigan wears well, after I finish it, I will most likely order um, a couple more sweater quantities in City Tweed DK because it's thin enough that I feel like it's going to make a flattering garment, but it's still, it still feels like it's knitting up quickly because it's not, you know, a fingering weight sweater. Um, I am knitting this on size 6 carbons. Uh, carbons are definitely my favorite needle at the moment. Um, I really love how light they are. I love that they have the warmth of a wooden needle, but they still have the, the speed of a metal needle because of the metal tip. So I'm really enjoying knitting on this. This is my uh, my comfort knitting. Um, so, which on that note, um, I mentioned uh, last episode that I was traveling unexpectedly last weekend. Um, I was traveling because I was going to my best friend's father's funeral. Uh, it was difficult. Um, he was like my second father growing up. Um, I was at I was at my best friend Marissa's house basically every weekend um, from the time that we were 10 to the time that we graduated high school and he would always say, um, when I when I called her house he would always say is that Judy 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 I don't know I guess that was from a song or something <laughs> but um, it was it was good to go and um, be with Marissa and her family and um, spend time remembering uh, remembering her father and um, getting to catch up with Marissa um, but you know it was it was rough I don't think there's ever a time when a funeral is not difficult um, so my my dad passed away in 2011 um, and it was under relatively similar circumstances. Um, my dad had cancer and uh, he was diagnosed and very 
quickly passed away. Um, and Marissa's father was in kind of a similar situation. You know, he really was like a second father to me. And when, when my dad passed away, he kind of stepped in to do all the the dad stuff. <laughs> um, I brought the guy that I was dating at the time to Marissa's wedding. And her father, you know, grilled him. Gave, uh, he gave my boyfriend at the time, um, you know, a hard time. And you know, which he's basically obligated to do. Um, it was, yeah, he was a great guy and I'm really going to, really going to miss. It, it's funny because I have, I didn't see him that often. I would see him when I went to visit Marissa maybe three or four times a year. But um, there are some people that just knowing that they're around um, is very comforting and he was one of those people, so I'm really going to miss him. So the whole reason I got into that was because, <laughs> to say, um, in the most roundabout way possible, that I knit on that calligraphy cardigan for about six hours on the train, about three hours there and three hours back. Um, so I really zoomed along on that and got a lot of progress made. I just watched episode after episode of Game of Thrones. Uh, the train was not crowded, um, so I was lucky enough to get my own like little set of two seats both ways, so I could put my project bag next to me and have my pattern on the little um, fold-out table. So it was um, it was kind of a nice bit of quiet time before and after um, seeing Marissa and her family. Maybe I'll cut that out. Is that too personal? So that got heavy. Um, unintentionally. <laughs> but, you know, I want to try to keep it as real as possible with you guys because I don't think any of us... I, I think there's a lot of pressure to sort of convey this very ideal lifestyle and very, um, you know, this very Pinterest-y lifestyle, which, of course is so appealing and which so many of us aspire to, but life isn't always like that. There are things that really suck. And um, I want to really try to keep it real with you guys. I'm very inspired by Shannon of the Sock Cetera podcast um, because she discusses sort of real life things a lot on her podcast. And, um, and she's just very open and I want to try to have some of that transparency with you guys um, because I do think of you as my friends and I want to be honest with you. All right. Let's talk stash. So I mentioned last week that I was going to be stocking an update. Uh, from Kemper of Junk Yarns, and I was successful. I got this beautiful sock blank in the Aphrodite colorway. It's so pretty! And it came with this super cute little card with stitch marker. It says, we hope you love your junk. Yarn, that is. That was really cute. I really enjoyed that. Um, and the sock blank itself is absolutely gorgeous. Let's take the ball band off here. Oh, so pretty. Oh, I love it. It's so gorgeous. Um, I think this is, is this single knit? Yeah, this sock blank is single knit. Um, I had talked about last week that I wasn't really sure how I wanted to go about knitting my double knit sock blank from Dyed in the Wool because I didn't know whether I wanted to split it out into two balls or try to knit two socks concurrently. You guys, I'm just gonna ball it up. I'm balling it up as two separate balls of yarn. 
Um, I watched the Andre Sue Knits podcast this morning and Andy talked about that that's probably going to be how she handles her double knit sock blanks. And that was like, whew, okay, Andy's doing it. So it's, it's okay. It's acceptable. <laughs> Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I might in fact try to do that this afternoon because I always like to have a couple, well at least one, uh, sock on the needles. I have the Dickin socks for Rob on the needles, but I also got another set of two 16 inch Carbons circulars, uh, US size 2, and they're burning a hole in my symbolic pocket. I want to cast something on on these babies, so that will be another sock. Um, and that was all the enhancement to my stash this week, um, which is good because I have a lot of yarn. Don't really need to be enhancing the stash that much. Um, but sometimes something comes along and you just you just cannot help it, and I'm so so happy that I got this sock blank and I think it's going to knit up beautifully. I want to introduce a new segment this week and this is called, oh for pod's sake. <laughs> um, this is where I want to talk about podcasts that I'm really enjoying or podcasts that have mentioned me on their podcasts. Oof, when you say the word podcasts a lot, it starts sounding like it's not a word. All right, so first of all this week, I wanted to talk about Helen and Mary Beth from the Crafty Toads podcast. Um, they are hysterical, they're so cute. Um, they have a podcast on YouTube and they run a store called Toad Hollow. Um, and both of them are actually knitting with Sweet Sparrow Yarns right now, so that was really exciting to see. Um, they are knitting absolutely gorgeous shawls and I'm so happy that they chose my yarn to knit them in because uh, both Helen and Mary Beth produce absolutely incredible um, finished objects, especially shawls. Um, and they're a lot of fun to watch. Um, so I highly recommend trying them out, going and uh, checking out their podcast. I also want to mention the Skein Enable podcast with Michelle and Jill. Um, they actually also mentioned this podcast uh, as well as my yarn on their show uh, this past week. They're hysterical. Um, Michelle and I became friends when she was doing a podcast called Skein After Skein and um, we just started interacting on Instagram and uh, on Ravelry and we just we just clicked. Um, and I've spun up some fiber for her in exchange for the most gorgeous project bag and some yarn. Um, she's just a fantastic person. And actually, yesterday was her birthday. Happy birthday, Michelle! Happy birthday, Michelle! And I also really enjoy Jill. Um, she is, I believe, a film archivist. And she just has a really interesting take on, on film in general. And... Um, I really enjoy their podcast. They have a great dynamic. And uh, Jill, your yarn is on its way to you. You should have it any day if you haven't already received it. And I hope you love it. I also wanted to mention my lovely friend Kimberly. She has a wonderful blog. Um, I will put the address at the bottom of the screen. And she knits absolutely gorgeous things. She's currently in the CC Almond um, like where you go through and you knit all of the socks that are in the Coffee with CC collection. And she just finished a pair out of Sweet Sparrow Yarns in the Mary colorway. And they look so beautiful. She's such a talented knitter. Um, her cabling is just gorgeous. And she's also currently knitting a wrap out of my Miss Honey colorway. So um, please go and check her out. She's got a fantastic blog. Um, and she's just a really sweet person. We interact on Instagram a lot. She's she's very sweet. She's very sincere. Um, so go check her out.
that is everything that I have for you this week. I am going to, it's rainy and yucky here today, so um, I'm going to enjoy hunkering down with my knitting and a cozy blanket and my two very snuggly kitties who are taking up like the entire couch right now. I have no room, no room. <laughs> um, and I'm just going to enjoy the rest of a cozy day at home. Wait, 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 I forgot, I forgot. Okay, <laughs> so I don't talk about my shop that much on the podcast because that's not what this podcast is about. Um, but I just wanted to take a minute and thank you guys so much for all of your interest um, in my shop, in Sweet Sparrow Yarns. Um, I was really conflicted about starting a podcast partially because I had just started my shop and I did not want to come across as it just being um, like a basically an ad, like a commercial for my shop and um, from the feedback I've gotten I it seems to not be coming across that way so I'm glad. <laughs> um, I am going to be showing yarns that I dye up before my updates. Um, but I'll try to really put that at the end of the podcast so that if you are not into that, if that's not something that interests you, um, or if you have like limited time and you just, it's all about the knitting, you just want to stick strictly to the knitting content, um, then that's totally fine. So I'm going to try to put those at the end. I don't have one this week, um, because I spent this weekend dyeing a lot of yarn and it is all drying. Uh, some of it is in my living room drying, some of it is in my bathroom drying, <laughs> Um, there you go. Secrets of a hand dyer. It dries in the bathroom. Um, oh, maybe I should cut that out. Um, but I just wanted to take a minute and thank you guys so, so much for all of your support of my shop. I've gotten so many kind words, um, on Instagram and on Etsy and I can't tell you how much that means to me. Um, it's always a little scary when you make something and you put it out there for public consumption. Um, and I'm just so thrilled that you guys seem to be really connecting uh, with my yarn and with the stories behind my colorways um, because every colorway is special to me. The inspiration for a lot of my colorways is from children's books um, or adult books, <laughs> um, but not like adult books like books that you read as an adult. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with adult books. All right. <laughs> but yeah, I just wanted to thank you guys so much. I can't tell you how much your support and encouragement means to me. And on that happy note, I will see you guys next week. Bye. This thing has got to turn off. All right. Nope, now the phone's upside down. There we go.